Hey everyone, this is Germ, and today uh, I'm going to talk to you about the recent patch for Battlefield 3. Uh, should, you should have already downloaded it by now, most likely. Um, and I'm going to ignore the part where it's kind of broken the game and it's hard to start it and stuff like that. There might be bugs with it. Um, DICE is really good at making games, but really bad at patching problems in them, so they should really get on that. But we're not going to talk about that today. We're just going to talk about the changes in the patch. Actually, a lot of weapon balances, especially for a game that's almost a year old, I'm surprised at the number of weapon balance changes that have occurred. Um, I'm going to skip over some of the boring stuff. There's a lot of reload speeds that are tweaked, but they're tweaked very, very slightly by like a tenth of a second or something, so I'm going to ignore those. Um, let's let's talk about damage changes and range changes in the guns. Uh, the UMP-45, the close range damage is increased. Uh, but its long range damage is decreased. That's actually pretty awesome because I really love the ump, but in close quarters it doesn't seem to fire quite quick enough uh, to combat someone with, say, like a MP7. So that might be a really good change that'll help it uh, compete more close ranges. The PB2000 has the long range damage increased, which is also pretty cool. Um, I like the PP2000, you know, like the ump, it's not the fastest firing thing, but it does pretty well at medium ranges, so uh, I guess it's going to be even better at medium range. The 1911's minimum damage is increased. That is an awesome change in my opinion, uh, because it never really felt like it was much more powerful than the M9 or the MP443 or the Glock 17, and uh, I think it should be because of the larger round. Um, so. Uh, I like, especially also it has the lower lower number of bullets, so you would hope that it would do a little more damage to kind of balance it out. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, I'm excited to see how well that works. Uh, the M93R's damage and range is reduced, um, which I guess makes sense. I wonder if that's going to carry over into Gunmaster, because I have a sneaking suspicion that Gunmaster's weapon tweaks are a little... Are their uh, weapon stats are a little tweaked, um, and the M93 is very overpowered in Gunmaster for where it appears in the rotation, in my opinion. Um, frag rounds, they've been adjusted. Their damage is a smaller area, but it's more consistently the maximum damage possible. I don't know. I'm not really excited about that. I feel like the frag rounds now barely do any splash damage. I know they had to be nerfed because they were way overpowered before, but I think this might be another step in the wrong direction, but time will tell. Uh, for AA, anti-aircraft, the damage of the anti-aircraft against infantry is increased, which is good because, as the patch notes say, the AA was incredibly nerfed, I guess maybe a patch or two ago. Um, you used to be able to use it to kill infantry like crazy, and now it's hard to kill infantry at all. And when you think about it, it's kind of ridiculous because the AA, I mean, it's two pretty massive machine guns on it. Or, actually, yeah, it's two pretty massive machine guns and uh, it's kind of ridiculous that it doesn't just shred infantry. I think it makes up for it in the fact that the AA is pretty easy to kill compared to a tank. Uh, 12 gauge buckshot close range damage has been increased slightly. Um, now this will be interesting because I didn't think the 12 gauge buckshot really needed an increase. I mean anywhere within like 10 feet if you get an upper chest or headshot it seems like you can pretty much put someone down so uh, I'm excited to play with that because I really like the shotguns and that might be a a uh, cool change, although I have a suspicion it might make the shotguns a little overpowered. Uh, and there's a little couple changes for, um, let me see, range penalty for the suppressor on the Scar H is reduced. Uh, I don't really care that much, but some of you might. Um, the coaxial HMG bullet velocity is increased, makes it easier to hit targets over longer ranges. I do like that because it can be really hard having to lead your targets that far uh, in a way that feels actually kind of unrealistic. So I think that'll be a little more realistic and that'll be good. A um, couple changes to flechette won't make a huge difference, it doesn't look like. A couple changes uh, for penalties with suppressors and heavy barrels, but uh, it looks like it all bounces out pretty well, so we're not going to talk about that. Um, and let's see, like the guns that have had their recoil adjusted, the SIG 553 horizontal recoil is reduced, MG36 vertical recoil is reduced, M416 um, all recoil has been produced, but the patch notes say it's to make it different from the M16A3, which I think is good because uh, I did think the M416 has always been a little too similar. The M16A3, the recoil amounts are slightly increased, which I guess that's interesting. Um, the M16A3 is an awesome weapon. Uh, I still use it all the time, and if it is a little overpowered, maybe, according to DICE, um, maybe they want people to be branching out and using a lot of the other weapons instead of one of the starter ones, so I wonder if that's why they did it. Now, miscellaneous weapons changes. 
the IGLA and the FIM-92 lock on air vehicles at lower altitudes and longer distances. Now, this is really interesting because after the most recent patch, I think it was the most recent patch, I actually felt like these were a little bit overpowered. Now, the range was greatly reduced, which was annoying, but when you did hit someone, it, it was pretty much, its per, well, currently, it's pretty much a one-shot kill. Um, and after the patch that's just gone live, probably yesterday or the day before, by the time you're listening to this, uh, that should be changed. So I'm interested to see it, because I really do like playing as an engineer, um, but I might really hate being a gunner in a chopper or a pilot if, if this is true, because that might make it really, really hard to stay in the air. We'll see. Um, burst fire added to the M5K. Okay. Um, adjusted some bipod bonuses. Belt fed machine guns are more accurate when standing and firing. Sure, don't really care. Magnum rate of fire reduced slightly, which will make it even more annoying for the people who aren't very good at using it, and even better for the people who like it, probably. Um, blah, blah, blah. A couple other little things. Underslung weapons in the AUG and SCAR L properly benefit from the hip accuracy bonus of an attached laser sight. That actually is pretty useful because firing. One of those can be a little bit hard. Um, the SOFLAM will no longer lock onto your own vehicle if deployed. That's nice. That's been an annoying bug. I'm glad that's being fixed. Now let's talk about vehicle tweaks. Uh, the first one on the patch notes list I'm actually a little upset about. It's removing the flares from the gunner position in helicopters. Now I understand that if you've got someone with flares in the gunner position and the pilot has an ECM, it, as long as you're talking and coordinating, it's very easy to stay in the air for long periods of time. So, uh, I understand that's a little overpowered, but with the increased range on the stingers uh, and providing it doesn't appear that they've nerfed the damage at all on the stingers, I think this is just another nerf to the chopper that, coupled with the changes for the stingers, is going to make it very, very hard to be a good chopper pilot. But time will tell, but I I'm a little bit worried about this one. Air radar shows friendly vehicles now. Um, I guess that's a nice change. I mean, I never really missed it before, but sure. Helicopter weapons can now destroy equipment with splash damage. This is huge. There's so many times I've tried been to destroy something, and I can't destroy equipment with a chopper, even though I'm hitting all around it just because I haven't landed a direct hit. So I'm, I'm excited about this change. Uh, repair da tool damage against enemy vehicles is lowered by 10%. Um, I doubt there are many people who aggressively attack uh, tanks and helicopters with their repair tool, but if you do, that might be slightly harder now. Uh, they've changed the reload behavior on a tank and a tank destroyer, which of course we haven't played yet, but the tank cannon weapons so that you can't fire two shots by doing the bug where you switch from one weapon right to another, like you fire, switch to the second weapon, fire, and switch back. I understand why they changed that. That's a little bit cheap. I do admit to doing it though, because hey, why not? Uh, the firing mode can be seen from the vehicle passenger seats. Sure. Uh, the passenger seats where you're allowed to fire your own weapons. I guess you couldn't see that before. I honestly never noticed that. Um, persistence tweaks. Now this is interesting. On the MCOMs, they have increased uh, the score you can get for attacking and defending an MCOM. Beforehand, you pretty much had to be right on top of it. You had to arm or disarm the MCOM to get ribbons. But now, you can just be within 5 meters of the crate attacking and defending. I guess the logic is, if you're somewhere in the area, you are contributing uh, to your particular team one way or the other, so you should be rewarded. I like that. I think that's a good change. Um, and it should make around the MCOMs a lot tighter, more hectic play, not that they aren't already. Uh, accuracy dog tags now show the correct stats. Of course, that's a good change. I don't think anyone will have a problem with that. Um, they should be showing the correct stats now, and I know I've noticed quite a few bugs before where they weren't. Gunmaster and Domination Winner Ribbons and Medals added, sure. Um, Co-op stars and dog tags are now properly unlockable good. It should have been like that a long time ago, but uh, it's good they finally got around to fixing it. Um, they've changed a couple things in the UI. Uh, letters have been added to the capture point icons displayed directly over the mini-map. That was also another thing I never really noticed much before, but I'm sure it did bother some people, so I'm glad they're changing it. They've added a change where the join button is removed. If you're not a premium user, you can't join premium servers, or they don't even give you the button option. I guess that's nice, because it will let non-premium users uh, know they can't join the game without going through the process of trying to join, but it does seem to contribute to the elitism factor of it, like, oh, this is the fancy place with all the fancy people, and you must stay out in the cold, but whatever.
I doubt many people really care that much. Uh, the Como Rose um, works when you're sitting in an AA vehicle, the voiceover. Whereas before, I guess it didn't. I don't know that I've ever been in an AA vehicle and used the Como Rose and thought about it that I couldn't hear the voice. But I guess if that has happened to you, then you'll be glad about that. Uh, miscellaneous little tweaks. The MAV will no longer remain floating in midair if the user exits it while still flying. That is a good change. Um, they fixed that bug where you could shoot while you're transitioning from sprint into prone. Um, so basically you can't dolphin dive now, I guess. Um, now you can't revive a player who switched teams since they died. I suppose that's also pretty good. They fixed the two exploits on Danya Fortress that would let you get on top of the level. It's happened to me a couple times actually by accident, so I'm glad they're fixing it because that's just kind of annoying. I hate to take a suicide when I don't really need to uh, just because of a bug in the game. So yeah, those are all the big changes. There are a lot of smaller ones, so you might want to head over to the Battlefield blog and read all about them, but those are just some that I thought were pretty interesting and might significantly change gameplay, so I imagine you've probably seen a dozen videos now of some you know knuckleheads talking about changes to the patch, so I'm not going to pretend this video is something different or special than those. I just wanted to give you my thoughts on the patch, and um, I'll be giving more impressions as it goes live, so if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you out on the Battlefield.